What's going on guys, Roger here with QVO Tactical. In today's video, we are shooting a gun that is better known for being budget friendly. However, the performance of this rifle far exceeded our budget expectations. Of course, I'm talking about the new Sabre line of rifles from Palmetto State Armory. Now, as always, I like to tell you guys how I go about getting these products in for review. Um, I reached out to our friends over at Palmetto State Armory about producing a video on their new Sabre line. Um, I specifically wanted the forge receiver variant that came with a Geisley Mark 13 rail and a pinned muzzle device. More on that in just a little bit. Uh, the team over at Palmetto State Armory was nice enough to send us this gun free of charge for us to use for this video and for future content. Now, as stated in previous videos, we are going to start getting right into the range footage for you guys. Um, if you're interested in how we have this rifle built up or the specs, uh, make sure to stay tuned for that segment at the end of the video. Now, without further ado, here are the first rounds out of the Palmetto State Armory Sabre. All right, guys, out here on the range for our first rounds with the uh, Palmetto State Armory Sabre. Um, later on in the video, we're gonna get into the breakdown with B-roll, exactly how we th have this thing set up. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna run some 55 grain through it out at like 15 yards and see how I'm liking the recoil with the uh, Reardon Manufacturing um, RC2 and uh, the trigger, the uh, Hyperfire single stage. Here we go. Already super flat, muzzle device is doing its thing. And guys, you know I'm not a fan of single stage triggers, but this RBT. Woo! So this, this trigger might make me a fan of single stage triggers. Um, I'm gonna have some other guys hop on. We got a special guest that uh, is gonna shoot this next um, and we'll get his thoughts. But I mean, guys, for Palmetto State Armory being, you know, the budget line of things, this gun is maybe budget pricing, but definitely not budget performance so far in my opinion, but it's only been the first 20 rounds. We'll see. All right, we got the man himself, Ivan from Kit Badger, and he's here to help us out on the range. Take it away, bud. Hey guys, fortunate to be out here visiting some friends in Vegas. And yeah, he showed me this. He's like, have you ever shot one? I was like, no. He's like, do you want to shoot one? I'm like, yeah, I like shooting guns. <laughs> so here we are. Gas this thing up and get some rounds through it. One thing I do appreciate is just this actually being gassed correctly and not violently over gassed, which a lot of guns are. Pretty sweet little single stage trigger. Pretty fun little gun. Yeah, you can definitely get on that trigger too. So, speaking of special guests, look who's back. What's up, Gabe? What's up, y'all? Gabe is back from Okinawa. He just came in time for this range review. Yes, sir. Your first rounds, bud. It's been a while. Dude, that's pretty sweet. Especially with this. Is this being PSA? I like that. That feels pretty good. That's sweet. Nice. Nice. All right, we got Gill up now. First rounds, go for it, bud. This thing being PSA, aesthetically pleasing, I think it looks awesome. I do like that single stage trigger a lot, like you were saying, and man, it just stays nice and flat overall. I mean, awesome. you and me have been hunting for like other brand two stage triggers, and now I'm shooting this thing going like, all right, maybe I gotta rethink the two stage thing. I know, you already got me to buy that two stage trigger DTS, and now I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh man, this one's cool too. All right guys, we got everybody out on range today. John is out here with us as well. First rounds, go for it, bud.
Nice. Thing's pretty sweet. Stays nice and flat. I like it. Very yeah, I'm smooth. liking the rear and stuff. Yeah, it's nice. I like the trigger too. All right, we got everybody out on the range today in this wind. Jade is up here as well, getting her first rounds. Call us an army saver, go for it. That's pretty cool. Um, smooth. I like. I haven't been able to do the two optic thing, so that was kind of fun to do, but obviously, or sorry, obviously, overall, really good, nice and smooth. So with it being a 14.5 and having all of this stuff on it, how's the weight? The weight's pretty, uh, it's pretty good. I think with all the stuff, all the gadgets and everything, I think it might be a little more balanced. Um, right here, I feel it a little more, but out here, not so much. Cool. Um, yeah. So with everybody's first rounds, the consensus is that this is a flat shooting gun with a really nice trigger. Uh, I'm typically not a fan of single stage triggers, but this Hyperfire RBT that is included with the Sabre rifle definitely has me rethinking that. Uh, you guys might also know our special guest Ivan from Kit Badger. Uh, he was in town visiting and was nice enough to come out to the range with us. He pointed out how well tuned the gas was for this rifle. We were getting really good three o'clock ejection patterns with very little to no gas in our faces. If you guys like the first rounds out of the gun, please do me a favor and hit that like button down below. And if you are new here, also consider subscribing because we post new videos every week. Now, something else that I wanted to get our first rounds on camera with was shooting this gun suppressed. All right, guys, with the uh, rear manufacturing uh, muzzle device, it's got a taper mount, so we're able to put on our uh, YHM uh, Turbo K. Just goes right on, pretty easy. Uh, but we're gonna run some 55 grain suppressed, see how the gas works, see how it does suppressed on this uh, 14.5. Here we go. I mean, I thought I'd feel more gas than that. Maybe it's because the wind's taking it all away, but nothing really in my face. Nope. Yo, that's pretty awesome. Um, normally we don't like windy rains days, but in this case, I can see a little bit of the gas, but then the wind's taking it right away. Um, definitely not as gassy as I thought it was gonna be. and. Not much change in recoil, so uh, how did it sound? How did it sound suppression-wise? Pretty good. All right. Cool. All right, I'm gonna have uh, Ivan hop up here and get his thoughts. Honestly, getting spoiled after a while to where I try not to shoot anything that's not suppressed. <laughs> so here we are. We can get this thing a go. I see the wind died down, how's the gas? Uh, it was fine. We'll see how it is shooting other strong side. Actually, I'm sure the wind is still moving some of it, but it wasn't bad at all. I was kind of surprised on the ejection. Like it's obviously has way more back pressure now than it did, but it was just kind of dumping them right here as opposed to like chucking them out there. Cause before it was roughly like about three o'clock. Yeah. And yeah, recoil impulse just changed a little bit. Usually when you have a can, which how true, turns into a little bit more of a push. But uh, no, nice, did a good job. That's not bad, dude. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, that's nice. I honestly didn't feel too much blowback or gas in my face. Felt pretty good. Getting hot though, yeah? It is getting pretty hot. <laughs> 
So the Sabre rifle performed very well suppressed. The majority of us did not notice any more gas in the face. As expected though, the gun did have a little bit more recoil, but nothing that wasn't easy to mitigate. Now, in our videos, it's at this point we typically zero our optics. I decided to let our special guest zero in for us, so here's Ivan from Kit Badger zeroing in the rifle. I ended up shooting, we're at about like 50 yards. Uh, this was my first round right here. Not super stable off that table, but enough to where I pretty much had the chevron on that reticle right there. Saw it, it was about two inches to the right, ended up coming left a total of, I think I dialed like 12 clicks because it's 0.1 mil and then fired these two. Actually didn't see these from back there, which is why I walked up because they're in the white, they're harder to see. And so it's probably right there. And now I just need to back it off a little bit and shoot and see what we get. A couple of those got pulled right, but we'll see where it's at. As I said, a couple got pulled right, which was most certainly that one. That one is probably me. That's probably that. So rather than chasing zeros, rather just shoot guns. So probably just come left one, up one, not even bother confirming it, start shooting steel. Now that we had our zero, we just wanted to have a fun day of shooting. So that's exactly what we did. Before we finished up on the range though, I asked Ivan if he would take a minute to give his thoughts on the PSA Sabre and this is what he had to say. Honestly, I've never shot this thing before and I've definitely shot a number of guns from Palmetto. I actually have an old upper I still shoot, like kind of like a dissipator type upper. Things a ton of fun and I think they did something good like one thing I do appreciate is when companies actually listen to feedback and my understanding is people reached out to Palmetto and was like hey I'm gonna put a Geisley rail on this so can I just get it with a Geisley rail or hey it's 14.5 I want to get this thing pinned can we pin it with a war comp pretty popular muzzle device and they're like sure we can do all of those things and so one, the fact that you're actually getting like a turnkey gun built by armors and with largely the stuff you want on there, it's pretty awesome. And then single stage triggers. Some people like them, some people don't. And what I've found personally, like with single stage triggers is if you're shooting things faster than slower, I like it because I'll be on target and I'll be like, okay, now, rather than taking up that first stage, which you can still shoot fast, obviously, with two stage triggers and stuff, but I don't know, time and place, I actually like them. I think overall, $1,200 price point, pretty cool, especially, yeah, considering Magpul Furniture, one of my pet peeves is actually guns that have the USGI just trigger guard always choose up my hand. I'm glad they actually did that with Magpul, furniture across the board. And yeah, I haven't put a ton of time in with this, but pretty solid shooting gun. And again, I appreciate that you can get something turnkey that you were otherwise gonna do anyway. And trying to find people to pin and weld stuff is not fun. So the fact that you can get all this stuff turnkey, this is what you're looking for, pretty cool. Now, Gil, Gabe, and I wanted to get another range session in with this setup, so we headed back out to the range the following week and we ran some drills. 
All right, guys, back out on the range. Uh, Gabe, Gil, and I wanted to get some more uh, range time in with the PSA Saber. Uh, we have a bunch of steel targets out here, pan out here for me, Gil. Uh, we got a mini A zone at 50 yards, another uh, C zone target at 75, uh, second C zone at 160, and then a far C zone at about 200 yards. And the drill is simple, two rounds each target. If you miss a target, do attack load off of the table, re-engage the target. Uh, we have a lot of wind like we did the first range day. So at the 200, if you have an issues, go ahead and take a supported position off the table or off a mag or something to get your hits. Um, but yeah, let's see. I mean, if we do it clean, you get it in eight rounds. Highly unlikely for me, but we'll see. Here we go. First the 50. Missed it to the right. All right, now the 75. Now the 160. And then now the 200. Oh my God, that was a miracle. Uh, 36, six, seven, 10 rounds. And yeah, that 200 holding it out there. Uh, the gun with the suppressor on, we don't have it on right now, uh, weighs a total of 10.2 pounds. With everything on there, I'm fine with the weight, but when you're out here kind of taking turns filming each other with that camera rig and then coming out here and shooting all these rounds and holding it out there, uh, it definitely starts to take a, t uh, take a toll on you. But um, yeah, total time, 36, six, seven. Have the guys try it next and see how they do. the standing shots time was 4168 4168 nice shots total good stuff man yeah man You're about to run it clean, Gil. Going for two? Yep. <clears throat>
God damn you, win. <laughs> Total time. 149. How much? 149. 149? Yep, 149. And then how many rounds? 17. Got it done though. Bro, you were cleaning them up at first. Yeah, I know. 200 standing is no joke, man. Yeah, my arms were just going numb at that very end. All right, same drill suppressed, here we go. Two hundred. Oh, just to the right of it. Just high. Whoo! 87, 82, 19 seconds total. Man. I was moving and grooving and then Yo! Gabe the Wind Whisperer, how do you make the wind go away? It's a secret. Uh, it was a 1951 with nine total shots. Nice, man. Good job, dude. Yeah, man. That's sweet. Nice, bro. 50, 70, 11 shots. There you go, redemption. That's all, you just don't like when it's not suppressed. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> all right guys, so a couple of things that I wanna go over while I'm out here on the range. Uh, I got a lot of questions about the scope switch from our previous video and the manipulation of the lever, the pulley system. Uh, a lot of guys were saying, hey, I want it to where it'll zoom in when I'm pushing it out versus the other way. I understand that and I thought the same thing until I got one of these and started using it. A um, Couple things, one, it is reversible. So you guys can set the system up. It's in their installation video. You just swap the cable on which side it is. And that way, when you pull back, 
it'll zoom out, and when you push forward, it'll zoom in. Um, now, for me, why I like it, the configuration that it comes in to where when you pull back. A couple things. For me, I'm gonna have my hand out here when I'm using the LPVO at, um, at like a low power, like a one or a two, because that's when I'm moving fast on targets when I'm using this like a red dot. I want my hand extended so I have support and I can drive the gun where I want. That's what I like, that's what I prefer. Additionally, I know for me, uh, the times that like I go out and do training with some um, LE buddies, when I'm doing shots where I'm like shooting further out, 200 plus, we're typically prone, we're typically supported. And so when I'm here, I end up pulling this thing in, almost like shooting pool, like a pool cue. And for me, that has been the easiest to use the scope switch system in. So that's why I like it that way. For me, I wouldn't wanna be on a supported position and then having to push it out to zoom in. I wanna get on here, find my target, cool, I got it, and then pull back to get the scope at the uh, magnification that I want. So for those of you who are wondering from the original scope switch video, yes, the system is reversible uh, and the configuration does come in. That's why I like it and that's why I run it that way. Um, the other thing I wanna talk about, the offset red dot. Had so many guys commenting about, hey, why are you running an offset red dot when you have an LPVO that goes to one magnification? Uh, I'm a guy that likes redundancies, so same reason why I run backup iron sights on my handgun optics. Um, if this goes down, I take a fall and crack the glass. Uh, um, it gets hit, it goes out, whatever, what may have you, uh, I have this 45 degree offset that I can run at a one time magnification and then run it that way. Um, additionally, for me, having the gun canted here allows my hand to sit on this 45 degree safety selector and run the gun much faster. Um, Travis Haley did a really cool segment on that about shooting with a gun canted at a 45 degree angle. So that is why I'm running the offset um, red dot mount on this Bobro engineering adjustable mount. And like we said earlier, we'll get into the studio and go over all the specs on how we have this thing exactly configured. Um, but yeah, as far as the rain session guys goes, or as far as the rain session goes guys, um, that's gonna do it for us. We appreciate you guys checking out this portion. Um, definitely let us know what you think down below in the comments. Now we hope from this rain session we were able to answer any questions you guys might have about the Sabre lineup. Um, additionally, I hope that everyone can see that the Sabre lineup is very capable at close to mid-range. Uh, in the future though, we are planning on going to a different range and seeing how well we can do with 300 plus yards with this setup. All right, so for all my gearheads now that stuck around, uh, let's get into how we have this rifle set up. Uh, this Palmetto State Armory Sabre is their Forge Receiver AR-15 platform. Uh, this particular model is offered with a Geisley 13.5 inch Mark 13 rail. It also has a 14 and a half inch pin and welded barrel. They offer it with a Surefire War Comp pin and welded. However, we purchased the upper and lower separately. That way we could pin and weld our own reared manufacturing device. Uh, we are using the R2C muzzle device. Reared muzzle devices utilize a taper mount design that way you can easily thread on and off your suppressors uh, speaking of suppressors guys we were utilizing the YHM turbo K with the Reardon manufacturing Atlas adapter this adapter screws into the back of your suppressor allowing you to use it with any taper mount muzzle device this particular model of the Sabre AR-15 comes with Magpul furniture a Radian charging handle and Radian safety selectors it also comes with a very nice single stage hyperfire RBT trigger the rifle is chambered in 5.56 and the barrel has a one in seven twist rate. Uh, it also features a carbon length gas system, PSA bolt carrier group, and a Springco white buffer spring. As configured, the rifle is priced at about $1,229. This is an amazing price in my opinion. You're definitely getting the best bang for your buck, full pun intended. If you are not a fan of Forge receivers, they do offer a billet version of the Sabre line, which can be found on their website as well. Now, for those of you who are curious about how we have this rifle set up, here is a breakdown of the gear that we used. In regards to optics, I was using the Primary Arms PLX Compact 1-8 LPVO. This particular model utilizes the ACSS Griffin reticle, and this optic is definitely one of my favorites, as you guys have seen it in recent videos. I have it mounted utilizing the Antimatter Industry Scope Switch. This is what allowed me to increase and decrease my magnification while keeping my support hand on the handguard. Definitely check out our full video on the Scope Switch if you haven't already. Mounted to the rear next to my LPVO is a Hollow Sun 507C red dot. I have it mounted utilizing the new Bobro Engineering adjustable bore axis red dot mount. This mount allows you to get the red dot as close or as far away from your primary optic as you want. It utilizes two bolts which tighten down, locking the red dot in place. It held zero very nicely on the range and allowed us to get quick hits with the rifle running the offset red dot. 
In front of the rifle, I was running a Surefire Turbo Scout with the new Unity Tactical Axon switch mounted at the nine o'clock position. For my laser aiming device, I am running a Somo Gear Ultra High Power Fully Potted PEC 15. We do have a legit full power PEC 15, however, that is in tan and we wanted to go all black for this build. The last piece of the puzzle is our prototype two point padded sling. We are almost done testing these and they should be ready to go into market in the near future. Guys, if you have any questions about how we have this rifle configured, make sure to leave those questions down below in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them. The way the rifle is set up allows me to easily manipulate the magnification, the weapon light, and the laser aiming device. My support hand has quick access to everything and I do not have to break my firing grip in order to manipulate any of the accessories. Now my overall thoughts on the build are that this is too good of a deal to pass up. Um, it is a very feature rich rifle with a very attractive price point. I am very happy that Palmetto State Armory took the time to listen to their customer base and build a rifle out of the box that has everything you could ask for. They are utilizing premium components at a price point that you cannot build this rifle for yourself. In my opinion, the only thing budget about this rifle is the price. Now, I do want to talk about the malfunctions that we experienced on the range. Um, after about 500 rounds of suppressed shooting, we noticed some malfunctions when utilizing metal magazines only. Some of the rounds would get caught up and they would fail to extract. Uh, a little bit of lubrication solved this problem. Between both range sessions though, I would estimate that we were about 750 to 800 rounds in. To me, these type of malfunctions at this round count without cleaning are nothing out of the ordinary. I have experienced the same thing with my higher end billet guns, so I'm fairly certain that if I maintain the firearm properly with cleaning and lubrication, it will run just fine. Uh, if that changes in the future, I will be sure to let you guys know. So we've seen some comments, people talk about the systems maybe over gassed or uh, they were getting malfunctions. Uh, we've gotten a couple malfunctions, but it was only when we were using the, uh, the metal mags. P mags have been fine, uh, but as far as gas or anything like in the face, I haven't noticed any of it. Gil, of you? Not really, no. Gabe, any gas for you? So for us, it's actually tuned pretty well. Uh, suppressed and unsuppressed, runs just fine. I know we have a little bit of help with the gas from the wind, but uh, other than that, guys, uh, I'm digging. I know they're using uh, the Geisley um, Low Pro Gas Block. So uh, if, that, if you guys are wondering, it's not an adjustable gas system in the one that I have. Um, but yeah, no issue with the gas, guys. And as far as malfunctions, uh, I've only noticed them when I was using my, uh, my metal mags. And then uh, other than that, it, it was just a failure to extract on two different mags. And then other than that, it's been running flawless. Now, if you're interested in this specific model, you'll be able to find links to it and all the gear used in this video under our review website, qvoreviews.com. Uh, there are several different models of the Sabre lineup to include the billet version that I discussed earlier. Uh, if you found this video useful and informative and it's helped you decide on making a purchase, we ask that you use our affiliate links because that does help us out monetarily. By using our link, we receive a small commission on every order from their website that goes through our link. These commissions help us to purchase ammunition and camera gear for the channel so we appreciate it when you guys use our links well guys that's going to wrap up this video uh, big thank you to josiah over at palmetto state armory for getting this rifle out to us um, also thank you to ivan of kit badger for coming out to play with us we appreciate it man uh, definitely check out his channel if you are not already subscribed to it uh, it's going to be linked down below in the description of this video as always guys we appreciate you watching make sure to like and subscribe and as always we'll see you in the next one